Okay, so this report is uh, taking more time in terms of podcasts, more number of podcasts than I expected, but that's okay. We are discussing some good points. So we are now in net zero campuses and action items in terms of uh, what are the areas where levers, ex levers, levers exist to move us towards net zero. So waste minimization and recycling is always a critical one. I have the pointer up already. Waste is generated at a university or college when a material or output offers no further use to the generator. It's crucial to note that materials defined as wasted by one sector is often crucial input to another. So it's talking about reduce, reuse and recycle. There are lots of controversies about whether recycling is really working and whether people are just collecting them and throwing out somewhere in the landfill and whether all that work you do to segregate the waste is actually helping and so on and so forth. Without getting uh, into all those uh, details, as carbon capture and waste to energy options are not currently scalable in most parts of the world, the onus is, onus is uh, still lying with the waste generators to reduce the amount of waste and materials they produce. So if you didn't have to worry about it, you would produce waste, hopefully not too much or unnecessarily. Somebody would collect it, convert it back to energy with some efficiency, or you would have carbon capture so that, you, you know, whatever happens to the waste is not going to have uh, more emissions being added. Of course, this is too idealistic anyway. How waste generates scope 3 emissions? So emissions from landfills. Process of anaerobic decomposition at landfills produces methane and carbon dioxide, which are potent greenhouse gases. Over a 100-year horizon, methane has 25 times greater global warming potential than carbon dioxide. Reducing waste emissions can start with universities and colleges separating organic waste from other materials and diverting this to compost pits. I already mentioned global warming potential before when we mentioned CO2 equivalent and this is how you do it. You look at the uh, relative warming of a particular greenhouse gas compared to CO2. You scale CO2 as 1 and here it's saying that over 100 years uh, methane has 25 times as much uh, impact in terms of trapping thermal radiation and causing global warming. Emissions from re uh, incineration. Legal incinerators as well as legal waste burning generates heat and toxic fumes. Not only are greenhouse gases generated during the process of incineration in many parts of the world, it adds to air pollution and reduces the quality of human life. Oftentimes incineration also produces uh, not only toxic chemicals but uh, particulate matter, fine ash and dust, which can be dangerous, especially black carbon, so it's very bad for health uh, as well. A plan for a circular economy. This is something that has picked up recently. We have gone from sustainable economy, sustainable development to something called circular economy. Essentially what was already implied in Herman Daly's work, but we like new uh, you know, terminologies and then once somebody coins it, everybody else jumps on it. So now pretty much everybody is talking about circular economy. There's another one called donut economy and so on and so forth. The circular economy concept advocates a change from the currently linear process from an economy where materials are extracted, used to make products and eventually discarded as waste. In a circular economy, there is an emphasis on eliminating waste and pollution, circulating products and materials. The at their highest value and regenerating nature. Most of the things we do convert uh, natural resources to uh, irre irreversibly re unrecyclable material and the idea of circular economy is to not do that which was what Herman Daly had already uh, advised us to do. Benefits again targets uh, scope 3 emissions, cost savings, resource conservation, building climate change resilience, uh, engaging staff and students, shared learning uh, with the communities and skill development and creating jobs and challenges again, difficulty in measuring emissions, building commercially scalable supply chains that support circular economy. So how do you actually take care of end of life uh, regeneration? That's not always easy or not even up to you. You need a background market and uh, people who processes 
who is going to make money out of that recycling and regeneration. Resistance to change both at systemic and individual levels as before, lack of policy and institutional support. So actually implementing these things will take serious policy uh, support and institutional support, uh, which means norms, regulations, rules, punishments and so on. Uh, measure, measuring impact again, reduced emissions, decreased waste generated to landfill in, in tons, which is easy enough to track, and increased material reuse. Okay, So here is a circular economy which increases material circulation within the economy for as long as economically and functionally possible. So are we building things that are easily recycled or when we do things we don't really worry about whether they can be or should be or will be recycled and who will do it. So design stage itself can take care of those things. So if you take raw materials, do your design and production manufacturing and then distribution happens. So you have scope one, two and three here. And consumption on use, reuse and repair has to be can be built in the design itself and then somebody has to collect it and recycle it so you have residual waste which is almost never going to be zero and then you feed the recycled material together with the raw materials back into design maybe the same thing or a different thing you can be building uh, you know different things with recycled material. How to embed a circular economy on campus? Circular economy initiatives on campus can include material recovery, responsible procurement or diverting waste material from a landfill. Circular business models initiated by staff, students or the local community can be incubated on campus. Uh, such as swap shops, selling campus furniture at discount rates, donating old books and clothes, renting machinery and tools. In the US, this idea of thrift shops and, uh, you know, swap shops and so on, uh, you know, furniture, discounted furniture are very common. In India, it's coming back again, but coming back as well. But in India, sometimes there's a cultural barrier against using used clothes reusing clothes. I gave clothes to my own nephew and he was not comfortable wearing uh, the clothes which were in great shape in fact and better style than anything he wears but hey that's the cultural uh, barrier there right. Universities and colleges can influence wider society through behavior change and by shaping attitudes towards waste and consumption. Engaging students through research and educational curriculum to design out waste uh, from campus activities. So designing reduction and uh, recycling of waste can happen from the beginning. How to implement material recovery on campus? So universities and colleges should aim to eliminate waste on campus through reduce, reuse and recycle initiatives. Material recovery is a key concept of circular economy. So obviously universities will need to understand the recycling opportunities available in their region and champion new and innovative ways to increase reuse and recycled content on campus. Each of these are actually a challenge but they are also an opportunity for innovation where incentives can be set up for undergrads and grads to innovate ways to do recovery on campus, reduce waste and so on and so forth. Recycling is more than putting a plastic bottle or a cardboard box into a different container to be diverted from landfill. Recycling also means finding partnerships or new uses for old products such as by donating old technology to schools or food to a food bank so that you have unrecyclable food which can go to a compost pit and you have food that is good can easily be served to a food bank and there is a lot of demand for it even in a rich country like the US. A zero waste management uh, sorry, sorry a zero waste movement is also gaining momentum in many regions. This movement stretches beyond good recycling practices to include sustainable procurement of goods and services that avoid the waste in the first instance. So there is the manufacturing side where design can be uh, you know developed to ensure reduced waste and recy ensure recycling and when you buy you can also make these cho those choices instead of always focusing on the low uh, cost because the 
uh, additional external benefits of buying uh, recyclable, reusable materials can be much higher than simply buying the cheapest product up front. Okay? Key strategies include diverting the majority of waste into multiple waste streams away from landfill, such as reuse markets, commingled waste, supplier take back materials, take back of materials, and on site reuse itself, like using reused furniture. Creating waste management. Uh, use reusing used furniture okay there you go okay creating waste management plans including for construction and demolition waste that identify waste diversion streams goals and destinations can also help implement circular economy and material recovery efforts on campus so you can literally set up verticals uh, which include students staff and governance and rules and financing and everything to make sure that innovation research and implementation keeps going forward to head towards net zero uh, you know with timelines metrics and evaluations benefits target scope 3 uh, emissions cost saving resource conservation building climate change resilience engage with staff students share learning with communities skill development and creating jobs in the community it happens in an informal sector, so you will see a lot of homeless people going around with a gunny bag collecting plastic bottles and other waste which they hope to sell and make some money, but that's a very low wage uh, thing. That's not something that uh, is you want. That's not something you want to rely on, right? So you want to be more proactive in creating a circular economy where recycling waste is a real livelihood and not just collecting junk. Challenges, difficulty in measuring emissions, resistance to change both at systemic and individual levels, existing infrastructure may not allow all these things, financing of, for upfront costs has to be uh, planned for, finding providers of alternative end-of-life services like recycling plants is critical. Uh, universities may be able to set up a lot on their own with innovation but you'll still need engagement with external recycling plants. You measure again uh, greenhouse gases, decreased waste generated to landfill, uh, decreased proportion of waste to landfill so as you in change your consumption and material uh, purchase and so on you want to carry a ratio of how much you are actually recycling and reusing and of course cost savings and reductions in cost of waste disposal can also be accomplished in terms of uh, uh, impacts. How to limit waste on campus? Some good points here because the next one is on value chain which we can leave for the next podcast. Maximize source separation. Ensure the university provides adequate education and facilities to ensure the retrieval of materials that can be reused, recycled or composted. Prevent food waste. Food waste can be reduced with the right training, incentives and procurement policies. R uh, source university catering uh, from suppliers who reduce food packaging to limit waste to landfill. Ensure excess food is uh, able to dis be Ensure excess food is able to be distributed to student groups or communities in need. The idea of Swiggy, Zomato and other food delivery systems has now made it very very convenient to order food all the time but they all come with packages and there is no way to make sure that they are recyclable, biodegradable and so on. So these have to be thought of when you think about preventing food waste. Uh, in the glo global total I think 6% of the emissions actually come from food waste which is horrendously bad especially considering starvation is still existing around the world. So recycling food or preventing food waste is really 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 important especially for college campuses in terms of leading by example and amplifying the new findings and ways to the larger community outside. Empower student organizations. Encourage and empower organizations to set up a food pantry which collects leftover non-perishable food or a food alert system 
to direct students and staff to events with leftover food. This happens in local buildings, but uh, grad students are always happy to go and eat food when it's available and uh, could be left over from a big meeting or a big conference or uh, simply left over from a canteen and so on and so forth. These systems can also be applied to disturbing supplies other than food. There are opportunities to educate students and staff on the impact of different kinds of food and therefore influencing behavior change. An example is student-led Meatless Monday to educate on the impact of animal products on carbon emissions. So these kind of small incentives tend to have a big enough impact and can actually get amplified. Okay, Separate collection of organics after applying a reuse system as suggested above. Ensure any organic materials are properly collected and diverted from landfill. Organic, organic waste setting in landfills emits high volumes of methane, a greenhouse gas 25 times more potent than CO2 as we said. There may be opportunities to compost organic waste directly on campus or alternatively to partner with off-campus services. As opposed to throwing in the landfill, composting allows you to capture the methane and use for energy and use the residues for, you know, re-nourishing the soils uh, and so on. Encourage reuse, support the rollout of refillable systems for beverages and other uh, reuse systems. Everybody runs around with a bottle, steel bottle or a bottle for drinking water now, which is good. Ensure university vendors follow suit so that your scope 3 emissions are also taken care of. Support second-hand shops, repair cafes, waste processing units and other zero waste initiatives. Apply the mantra, one person's trash is another person's treasure and show leadership, promote and share waste minimization initiatives with the wider community, influence waste management partnerships or student organizations to expand their initiatives to act outside of the university context. Amplifying your message to the outside is one of the main goals of educating your students and sending them out versus directly being engaged with the community around. Right? So if the university is able to tackle their waste output and reduce outputs and reduce reuse and recycle effectively, then these learnings and impacts can be transferred to the wider community. Okay? So value chain, I think I'm getting close, maybe one or two more podcasts, but these are all useful, although they are things we hear all the time and they are written about in blogs and so on. Uh, you may have heard of it, but here I'm just trying to put it together as a series of podcasts summarizing a nice report. I find that people keep reporting me that reporting to me that instead of reading a 200-page document, they find it easier to listen to my summary. So hopefully it has some use and practical applications as well. Okay.